1 Peter 5, 8 says, The devil is seeking whom he may devour. Join Don Allen as he looks to make you undevourable. Thanks for giving me seven minutes of your day to help make you undevourable. I'm your host, Don Allen. Man, we need some saints who are going to be undevourable. We need some people who are going to stand up and be the people of God and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, we've got to begin to walk in the miraculous. I mean, we, we need more of the miraculous in this day and age. Churches have somewhat scheduled out the miraculous. Sure, sometimes we get to set aside a special day for healing or we schedule a guest speaker to come in and minister healing and we make healing and miracles into an event. Really, I think what happened is is we've adopted the same mentality as the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. I know we don't like uh, to think about that, but I'm going to tell you what, I think that's exactly what's happened. Mark 3, starting in verse 1, it says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there that had a withered hand, and they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. Man, I find this amazing that these guys, that even though they couldn't stand Jesus, they totally expected him to heal somebody. And he said unto the man with the withered hand, Stand forth, and he said, said unto them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other. Here we see Jesus coming in and he finds a man in the church who's standing there surrounded by these so-called ministers of God. And this man's no better. This man's hand is still withered and Jesus came in and he wasn't happy about it. Here's these so-called ministers who knew the books, they knew the laws, they knew God, they knew about the coming Messiah, and yet they didn't recognize him when he was standing right there in front of their faces. And these are the men who the people had their trust in. These men found it more important to be sure that they stuck to the program of the Sabbath day and that nothing would interrupt that. So they made healing an occasion. Well, you can't do that here. You can't do that right now. And I'm seeing this in the church today. We departmentalized healing. We have to schedule healing. We have to schedule miracles. And yet Jesus found nothing more important in that place on that day than the healing of this man's hand. And he was willing to mess up the whole system and the order of the service to be sure that this one man would leave whole. And here we're so concerned about the other 99 in the room. And Jesus said he'd leave the 99 to go get the one. And he showed us this time and time again. How many times have we seen this in the modern day church? We've turned into Sabbath day saints again. Jesus came in and he picked this day on purpose to show them that the preaching your sermon and the order of your service cannot override the healing of the people. There were times that Paul was preaching and it says that he could perceive that a person had faith to be healed. And so he would stop right there, heal the person and then continue. Now, listen, I understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I know that that people, they need to hear that word. But uh, at what point do we become the doers of that word and dare to step out and stand up in front of the fault finders and heal somebody? We need a people who aren't afraid to stand up to be seen, cry aloud to be heard, and dare to interrupt the systems when the systems aren't working. We become so predictable in church today. Three songs, maybe some announcements, and then, uh, you know, in there somewhere, maybe, uh, you know, an offering message. I mean, we now have clocks that count backwards hanging on the walls of the church so we know when to stop preaching. Good Lord, I hope the Spirit doesn't wait until 1131 to move because nobody's going to be there. Think about this, and it's sad. It's going to be a real eye-opener to you. I'm talking about the current church systems. I want you to think about this. You come in, and yes, you can pick the seat that you want to sit in. But after that, the rest of the show, you're going to be told exactly what to do. We're told when to stand. We're told when to pray. We're told when to worship, when to raise our hands, when to praise the Lord, when to give, when to sit down, when to come forward, where to turn in the Bible, when to stop worshiping. Shoot, you're even told when to amen. Can I get an amen? And finally, when to leave. And yet we're so free, aren't we? And the real problem, and I know somebody's going to say, well, there needs to be some order to the service. Does there? Does there really need to be order? Jesus came in and he wasted no time in absolutely messing up the order on purpose on the Sabbath day in the temple. He created a divine disorder for the church. And it was always during these moments that people actually got to experience the true nature of God. When's the last time that you felt the freedom to just go for it during a church service? I mean, have you ever felt like, man, something's just coming over me and I I don't know if I should run, jump, dance, raise my hands, laugh or cry? Maybe all of it. But no, 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 I've got to fight this. I must fight these urges. The song almost over and and we need to take up an offering. I can't go lay hands on that person. It's sermon time. I I can't holler out. It's worship time. I, I can't just go to the altar and cry it out. It's time to hear the announcements. We leave the service the same way we came in because we refuse to allow Jesus to mess up the order of the services. So we box him in and we sit there and we listen and we leave and we've not had a true experience with Jesus in 10 years, but we keep coming anyways. 
Luke 13, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and he said, woman, you are loosed from thine infirmity. He laid his hands on her. Immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. And he said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work and them come to be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord answered him and said, you hypocrite, don't each one of you on the Sabbath, you're going to loose your ox or you're going to loose that donkey from the the stall and lead him away to watering ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound low these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the sabbath day divine disorder this minister somehow thought that the keeping of his doctrine was going to be more important than the healing of this woman on that day well jesus came in and he made it very clear that the systems are not working and i have come to establish a new system a system of healing he came in to, to, to establish a system of love. He came in to establish a system that would reveal God to the people and to let you know that you can't make the miraculous a special occasion, but in fact, every occasion is the right occasion for the miraculous. Fight the systems, my friends. I want you to step up. I want you to step out. I want you to go heal the sick. I want you to go raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cause the lame to walk, the blind to see, cast out devils, even on a Sunday morning during church. You know what? That's going to make you undevourable. God bless you. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. If you would like more information and resources on how to be undevourable, we invite you to check out our website. Go to www.twoguysandabible.com. That's T-W-O, guysandabible.com. You can also contact Don Allen directly for prayer. His email address is don at twoguysandabible.com. Telephone is 573 216 1871.